G'day folks. Oh, welcome to a nice hot Monday afternoon. Um, just a bit of an update and probably a bit of tinkering around. I haven't been pretty much flat out with um, work and other stuff lately so I haven't really done many videos or any actually. I think I was just look, looking on my chat page. It's been about a week. Um, I'm going to get my ass into gear now that things are actually dying down a bit and I can uh, spend the weekend in here. Uh, rather, than, rather than either inside in front of the computer sorting things out or um, out in the field, but yeah, not too bad. Picked up some uh, goodies recently. Uh, big thanks to Dave from EEV Blog for um, doing a quick review on some uh, USB microscopes. I've been uh, looking at one for a while, or just considering one for small electronic teardowns like uh, small phones and things like that. And uh, yeah, he went over the two cheap ones off eBay and basically one was garbage and this one here which has a basically a pen sized um, assembly with a cord on it is actually really good and it even works as a um, USB camera with or a webcam with no microphone on it so it's good all alloy stand and base everything's metal very easy to work with as you'll see in the review if I can find the link for the review I'll put that in the description but no did a good job showing it and it works quite well for um, PCB inspection. Uh, even did a little bit of soldering with it and you could do SMD rework with it if you get used to it. And obviously practice on some uh, scrap like he did. But yeah, it's really good. I'm quite impressed. Now uh, that was $60. It was half the price of the dirty cheap nasty one, but the dirty cheap nasty one was really bad. Like it had a tiny little plastic stand and kept falling over and it was just a pain in the ass to focus. So. Yeah, I'm glad I didn't get that one. But anyway, um, what else? Not a lot else happened in here. I haven't had a great amount of time. I started doing Sono sub refit, but basically just ran out of time. I get too tired. So I've done that. I've got a box of goodies for Alex down there. I've just got to remember to get his bloody address off him again because I don't keep addresses on file. Um, yeah, so that'll be sent out soon. It's got a neon sign transformer and some uh, expensive silicon in it, so he can uh, have a play around with that. And a TV we'll look at this afternoon. Um, it's going to be a high voltage fry victim. It's already been banged up, but yeah, this is what I was doing Saturday afternoon. And uh, yeah, I replaced a generic Chinese woofer with a um, generic Pioneer Chinese woof subwoofer. Uh, up to 1200 watts peak power, uh, 250 or 300 watts RMS. Definitely a lot better than what I had in there, so we'll give that a go. Um, should work a lot better. I don't know if the volume or anything's right, I'm just winging it at the moment. But winging it's better than doing nothing at all. Likewise, I want to machine the end bung for that, which is there. I want to machine that out and fit a cardboard um, port tube down inside it and just see if that'll do anything. That was just a spur of the moment thing and uh, yeah I've got a whole lot of TVs and stuff recently that's kind of, that's going to be kind of handy if this one works it's a um, television not a monitor and it has uh, video input and that sort of stuff I hope the panel isn't cracked but yeah I basically went to the dump to drop some stuff off from mum's place and they had this giant pile of televisions out the back like a huge pile probably 20 cubic meters of TVs and I just asked him about it because they've given me TVs and stuff in the past and I just said, you sure the boss don't care if stuff goes missing? And basically you just said, if I can take the whole lot, I can have them. Because <laughs> they can't get rid of them fast enough. Or the company that recycles them and basically they manually dismantle them in a production line. Um, or what do you call it? Deep production line. Disassembly line. Um, they can't get rid of them fast enough. So they're just basically dumping them in a heap on the ground. Filling the bin, then dumping them. So, yeah, I helped myself to quite a few flat screens. Most of them are trash. They'll be good victims to uh, nuke and do all kinds of things too. But I did get a 50-inch Pioneer Plasma, which seems to have a good panel in it, miraculously. And we'll have a close look at that one too, because it's remarkably beat up, but the panel's not broken. Yeah, here's some of it. There's a LG with a busted panel. You've seen that before. Sharp Aquos with a busted panel, unfortunately. Some of it might have been fixable, but that's cracked. Um, that's a Pioneer 50 inch. Again, I think it's an absolute mess. It's all been scored up, but I think the panel's all right. 
fingers crossed it's all right. There's more down there. There's an NEC 27 inch widescreen. But again, the panel's all munched across the back there. It's had TVs tumble out of the bin and on top of it and just munched it. So I'm gonna see if I can power it up long enough to um, do some fun things. Maybe microwave transformer it. So anyway, let's drag this one inside and the other one and have a look at it. Oh, there we go. As you can see, this one's a perfect eBay special. Good as new, just a very minor distortion. <laughs> Actually, it's quite a major distortion. It's having uh, issues by the looks of it. There's something creeping down in there. Oh, it's part of the um, shielding mesh that goes around the front fascia. But yeah, it's got a bit of a shimmer to it, some multiple coloured lines, and wherever the, the um, on-screen display moves from, there's always snow. So it's not very happy. Um, just another typical LG Flattron, I guess. They all seem to have panel or at least driver, bottom edge driver issues. It could just be a bottom edge driver, but this thing's beat to hell from the um, rubbish tip, so it ain't worth saving. Especially not when the front's all um, gouged up. Plus it's standard definition. The pixels are as big as Minecraft blocks. That's not a good sign when you're buying a TV. But it does have a happy little... Um, high voltage power supply in it. Yeah. I was talking to one of my subscribers about this well, last week and he said it may have had a um, Samsung chassis in it which was notorious for going um, putting panel voltage to the earth frame. Uh, one of his Dell ones was very poorly grounded and it had the same Samsung chassis that some of the LGs ended up with early on and it went full panel voltage to ground and gave him the shock of his life so there's a specific chassis out there which seems to be branded LG but made by Samsung and uh, delivers a potentially lethal shock if it goes bad like one of the little silicon insulated buffer chips arcs over through its non-insulating goop the goop just stops insulating and then it arcs over to the chassis ground not a good thing not at all so yeah Anyway, this one works, it just it's not happy. There isn't a lot that I can really do with it as it's working. I'm better off just uh, gutting it, strip it down, and keep the panel. I mean, there really isn't really anything else I could use it for. I don't even know about getting rid of the lines. Hitting it doesn't change anything. Yeah. Tapping it, bashing it doesn't make the lines flicker or try and go away. So I'm guessing one of the driver chips or the edge ribbon itself is defective because those edge ribbons have a number of capacitors and a little um, flat chip on film device semiconductor and if they go bad then you get that so I'm not sure whether it's yeah it could be the board on the bottom or it could be the uh, the panel itself either way it's doomed same with the other ones I've got two inside which I've had in storage for yonks and I've got another one or two on the trailer hopefully with good panels and uh, It'll be fun, especially when I build my uh, washing machine high voltage generator down there. That's going to make a screaming mess of plasmas. Those things whistle and squeal like mad when you load them up. They're kind of fun. Okay, well, that's the uh, Pioneer plasma. Don't know who it's made by yet. Uh, it says made in Japan, so it's probably uh, maybe Fu um, Fujitsu Hitachi or someone like that. But as you can see, it's seen better days front's coming off it, the back's stoved in, and I've got a power lead connected to it, so let's turn the power on and see what happens. Stand by, power. Power light's lit up. And now it's out. I don't think it's happy. <laughs> That's power on. I'm not even trying. I wonder if the panel is cracked somewhere. I had a really good look at it and it doesn't look cracked, but I'll bet you there's a crack somewhere. Yeah. Mind you, this thing probably had an in initial major failure before they decided to dump it anyway. Yeah. Oh, that was worth a try. 
It didn't go bang though. I was kind of hoping for a pop and a flash or something from the back of it, but oh well. I guess I wasn't mangled that badly. Mind you, it's pretty impressive that the panel isn't in pieces and uh, it's gone through that much trauma getting dumped into and then out of a uh, bin full of scrap TVs. It's done pretty well. That and it's full of bloody... What is that? And bits of grass and other stuff. It's been outside for a while. It's full of spiders. So it's been out in somebody's backyard for a while, but look at the chassis build on that. It's all um, extruded alley. It's really heavy duty stuff. That's why it survived. Oh, well, I guess I better pull it to pieces. We'll do that in a separate video. <laughs> I'm not going to do it now. It would be kind of funny if this was easy to fix with just capacitors or something and then I found a place on the wall to put it. <laughs> the world's most mangled working television, or plasma anyway. It's pretty hard to beat that. Having a look at the back of it, I haven't turned it around yet, but the back has taken a serious whack. I was expecting the power supply and everything to have been pushed against the panel and actually break the glass, but it doesn't look like it. It's um, it's very dented in. Can't see it because I've got lights off to keep things cool in here, but... Yeah, there we go. That whole back has just been crushed in. It's probably why it's flashing its light at me. <laughs> There's no connectivity across the power supply because the board's broken in half or something like that. Anyway. I don't know what I'll do with this. I'll move it outside, I think. Same with that one. There's no use in having that in here now. I've done my test run, so even if it gets rained on tomorrow night or something, it doesn't matter. Uh, I'll have a quick look at that Conia one, or whatever it is. Hycon one. That's 12 volt input too, so I'm going to have to uh, wrestle up an adapter for it. Or at least a, a um, barrel plug and a battery, essentially. 7 amp hour battery. I'm hoping it's... Um, working because I need another low voltage security screen. Okay, well the little Hycon seems to work fine. Uh, I've got on-screen display and everything working fine. I don't have signal generation for it yet, but I'll uh, put it in the keep and to further test pile. More than likely strip it down to a bare panel and just do the same thing I did with the other one and uh, make it into a little uh, low voltage security monitor. Very handy worth collecting these. Most of the time the power adapter either gets lost, broken or just burns out and dies. And they're usually always 12 volt. Uh, of course crack it open and I noticed um, 12 volt, marked 12 volt rails immediately once I opened it up so yeah. Don't know who the panel's made by. Just very basic boards. It does have VGA input as well so very handy. These are uh, little displays. That one there is also 12 volts at the Sharp Aquos, but it's uh, cracked, so there's no real point in doing much with it yet until I want to uh, nuke it. and might get some high voltage treatment. It's one of the um, fairly thin LCD, so it doesn't have a big sheet of acrylic in it. I've collected a few uh, dead widescreen LCD monitors that have the thick sheet of uh, acrylic plastic in the back of them, because that stuff is really useful, so... Yeah, I've been collecting a few of those and just stripping them down. If this didn't work, it'd get the same treatment because it's got one of those thick acrylic backings in it like a computer monitor. Which is essentially what it is. It's a computer monitor with a uh, bigger uh, analog input board on it. There's no digital or anything on it. It's just pure analog and a pure analog TV tuner. So, yeah, very good. That'll do for this afternoon. I'm going to move some stuff around, throw some stuff back outside and... That'll be it. Thanks for watching.